It's another round, of course, that explains everything. Um, the monkey problem, specifically, which has taken way too long to get out, as is tradition. Um, it's just me. Um, executive dysfunction kind of sucks. Uh, I am working on that, though, but um, there's been a bunch of stuff going on, and then I had a bit old sinus infection, and it's just taken me a bit to come back to this, but hopefully this won't be the only time I have to do this. Um, and so this, this particular episode is called That's Not a Vet, um, and what we're going to look at is this particular idea, or is it? Um, because there are some situations where I think that applying a Western viewpoint to it is erroneous. Well, a lot of things there, but um, especially in terms of veterinarian care. Um, and so I want to look at some of them um, and talk about the people who are purportedly taking their animals to a veterinarian or a clinic or something like that. Um, and we're going to look at different classes. I, I, there's so many things wrong with the picture. Um, and we're going to dissect this particular one because it's pretty freaking ridiculous. Um, so the first thing I want to do is create a couple of definitions, I guess, or sort of working definitions for us. Um, in terms of the types of facilities available and the types of professionals that are running those facilities. So the first one we have, and these are all everything I've got here I've found that was either within Vietnam or Cambodia. Um, mostly Cambodia, but also I did look at some in Vietnam. Um, quite clearly, you'll be able to tell. But so this is an actual veterinarian. It's very clear that they're professionals. They're neat. Everybody's wearing some sort of uniform. Um, there's a doctor. There's an actual, like, a doctor of veterinary medicine there. Um, they're using sterile facilities, and they're very efficient and clearly practiced. So that's, when I say a veterinarian, this is what I'm referring to. Um, and then there are also vet clinics. And, you know, we have them, typically it's like a vaccination clinic, or they might offer like a spay-neuter clinic or something. But um, actually, I doubt that's offered as a clinic, but I know vaccines are. Um, there's not a doctor. And the staff has training at these clinics. Um, some of them actually seem quite competent, but there are also a lot, mostly, of situations where it's quite obvious that it is clowns using the clinic. Um, and whether or not they have permission of the owner is iffy. Um, you know, and that, you know, it can be kind of questionable. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some ways you can tell if it's a clown show. Uh, <laughs> here's a spoiler, most of them are. Um, and then with the clinics, the facilities and the level of training and the environment, sterility, that sort of stuff, um, vary and sometimes can be a little bit questionable, but, you know, some of the examples we're going to look at are pretty legit. Um, but there's quite a few actually where at bare minimum, the facility is legit, but it's probably still a clown show. Um, and the clown show is exactly what it sounds like. Nobody is actually a medical professional of any sort, human or animal. Um, it's the same cast of chotes doing this. Um, you know, and you'll, you'll start to see the same people around. And I, of course, I have a terrible time with that because I have a form of facial blindness where I really struggle with facial recognition. And as a result, we'll have to use software sometimes to identify, you know, if I'm looking at the same person, excuse me, in two different pictures. Um, but, you know, it works. So, uh, like I said, we're going to look at a couple of ways you can tell. And one of the big ways you can tell the quality of the facility is the number of cameras present. If you have an actual veterinarian, like the first one, this one right here, there is one camera. There's not a bunch of VOs hanging around. It's just one. Um, so that's a good indication. They're using all sterile facilities, practices. Everybody's wearing gloves appropriately. And if you actually watch the videos from this particular channel, and they are quite professional, um, you can see that they know exactly what they're doing. This is a real veterinarian. 
Um, you know, and it's the, they're not playing around either. And that is, I think, probably the biggest tell that you're actually dealing with professionals is if they're not screwing around. Right. And I'll show you exactly what I mean, because none of the clowns can just do the thing. They have to play games and and, you know, ham it up for the camera because it's what they do. Um, I did want to point out one thing in this since we've established that this location is absolutely a veterinarian. They have a doctor. They're sterile. There's two things I want to point out um, that I think are very important. So first, sometimes people go barefoot. And I have to sort of say, okay, we're going to rule that out as a reason to question the validity of any part of the care being received there. People just happen to go barefoot in that area. It's hot, and that's a normal thing to do. So, you know, cultural bias. I get it, it's a thing, but that's not something that we're going to consider. Um, the other one that we're not going to consider is the use of toilet paper. Because, and I've seen this at the Vervet Monkey Foundation, I've seen this at legitimate veterinarians. It's available, it's convenient, it's not like, it, it's a reasonable thing to use, especially if you're not in an area where paper towels are common. Perhaps they're not, I don't know. Or most people don't make a habit of buying paper towels. I, I couldn't say I've never been. I hope to get to go one year. Um, but so that those are some little ground rules that we're, we're setting out as we go through this, um, as one does in science. <clears throat> Here's another professional uh, facility or professional operation. They're doing a TNR, which, as you probably remember, stands for trap, neuter, release. And that's probably the absolute best method of control for populations of monkeys, of cats, I'd say of humans, but it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not advocating for... Actually, it's not as funny as it could be. Um, because there have been situations where governments have forced that. But anyways, um, let, let's go back onto a lighter path. So this is a situation where they take the animals, they put them under, they do the alteration, either a, a vasectomy or a tubal ligation they're not doing a spay or neuter necessarily with these animals with the felines actually they do they just castrate but with the monkeys doing that causes a lot of harm to the animal in his troop because a lot of them the testicles are part of the sign of dominance um I know with vervets it has a lot to do with the color actually they turn very blue because of serotonin um, and actually they have blue in their skin all over the place. Um, it just depends. Anyways, so clearly an efficient operation. They're not, again, they're not screwing around. They've just got the facility. It's clean. It's sterile. It's very clear. People are wearing the right gear. They're masking. They have their heads covered. They're not wearing like their purse under their, like, it, I'll show you what I mean, but like, even this, oh, the tray, isn't that lovely? Nice, sterile, organized, this is professional. We love professional, you know? Um, and they just, they move the animals on, here we go. Um, and th these animals will never know. He will never even realize that anything has changed except for, you know, maybe he's a little sore and groggy, but that's it. Uh, everything else works like normal. He's just not going to make any more babies. And once you have that stable population, like we've talked about before, the, you don't get more animals coming in and they're not reproducing. So the population numbers tend to, you know, stabilize them or diminish. And you have fewer problems with ferals if you have them or with, in my case, I always talk feral cats. Um, but with monkeys in general, because monkeys, as we have established, and I just want to reiterate this, monkeys are not pets. They are not pets. They have never been pets, and they never will be pets because they are not domesticated. And if you are still confused, go back to the first couple of episodes and read that definition. 
if you are keeping, and I'm going to say this without any hesitation, if you are keeping a monkey as a pet, you are abusing that animal. Period. Full stop. You should be ashamed of yourself. Go, go away. You know, because that's, no. You cannot own a pet monkey without abusing it. It's physically impossible. Because you are not a monkey and you cannot be with them 100% of the time. You cannot meet their social needs. Even if you have multiples, you are still depriving them of a troop of the social interactions and enrichments they need. I guarantee it. They're not pets. Somebody commented about that in the previous video. And I remember being absolutely just beside myself going, have you not been paying attention at all? We do not keep monkeys as pets. Bad. So here's the situation where we can tell right away that these are clowns. So sort of looking at the other side. Anyways, um, that one just threw me. Lots of ways that we can tell, obviously. I mean, what is this? This is some person's desk. And a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of the hints. We have an obvious desk. It's got a pen and a calculator on it. And then they just stuck this poor baby on a desk. It, it's the weirdest thing ever. Um, at least nine cameras. I think I actually counted more one time through, but it, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes. Um, there are a crap ton of cameras in here. They don't have any supplies or equipment besides a roll of paper towels. That's it. So this is, I mean, this is, they're all just standing around talking. They play with the animal. They're showing the animal off. You know, they do things to deliberately make the baby make noises and cry and be upset because they like the view. They, they like that. So these are just 100% clowns. They're not even trying to fake it. Here's another one where they're trying to fake it, but I can't tell how serious they are because it's so obviously stupid. And, and I try really hard not to call names. I, I reserve chode as um, not name calling, but just an accurate description of the people who keep these animals as pets, because again, not pets. And this is abuse. And what the freak is with the lizard? And, and here we have, and this is one of the tropes, the obligatory moped ride with the terrified infant of a threatened species wearing the dumbest pants ever and covered in iodine spots. I think that's iodine. No, that's not iodine. Iodine's yellow. My bad. Um, it, it, it's another compound that does nothing of value in this situation. It literally just colors his skin. Um, she, she might have well have drawn on, might as well have drawn on him with a Sharpie for all the good, the stuff she put on him does. I just can't remember its name off the top of my head and I'm not going to go look it up, obviously. <laughs> Anyways, so obligatory moped ride, terrified animal clinging to you, and why is there a lizard? Like, this is so dumb. And they do it all the time. I don't know why they think we want to watch them ride around with the animal they abuse. I mean, I don't watch any of their stuff unless I'm looking for these clips. And then I have a very specific way I go about it to minimize the amount of damage I'm doing, basically, by giving them views. Anyways, so here is the supposed doctor, Mr. Kenny, although she calls him something else later. And this is the most ridiculous clownish setup. It's somebody's like bureau. That's, that's somebody's dresser in their bedroom by the closet door. And they've just shoved all the magazines and everything from that desk in the corner and like have... And this is, this is the weirdest thing here, right? They've got all these pills in blister packets just laying out unlabeled. Like, what is this? And I guarantee none of these are meant for animals. These are going to be human meds because they're not serious um, about anything. 
So <laughs> she calls, she calls the doctor a couple of different things, but to be clear, this child is not old enough to be a doctor of anything except maybe gum chewing. And even that's questionable given some of the things that we see in this. Um, this is a teenager, maybe early twenties, definitely not a doctor. Um, and, and then they're talking about, oh, did you give him the medication? Like the, the blister packets of randomness you've got all over the place. Um, and then the medicine on the skin. No, the blue stuff, not medicine. You, not a doctor. Uh, no. <laughs> but so, you know, I had to look at some other things here. And this was possibly the funniest thing I've ever read in my life. Very happy to have blood pressure measured by doctor. Let's talk about Tom and Dr. Mr. Kenny using the blood pressure cup. After, of course, we look at some of the other stupid things that they do. Um, putting random drugs on a banana. Why is the lizard back? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But this takes the cake. Can anybody spot the problem in this picture? I mean, besides the blue dots on the monkey and the fact that monkeys are not pets and that this guy's... I'd say that a box of rocks, but that would be rude to the rocks. Um, so, had a moment to guess. Let's look at the display. Tom's blood pressure is very high. This cuff is for an adult human and should be used around the upper arm, like those chairs at Rite Aid or KLS or whatever the heck it was called at the time, um, or Walmart, the pharmacy has them, right? And where does that cuff sit? It sits on your bicep, not around a leg that is as big around as your index finger. Look at this, look at this. This guy's finger right here is bigger than these, th this animal's little bitty limbs. So no matter how tight you fasten it, the cuff will never get tight enough to do its job, which is cut off the flow of blood. Because that's how blood pressure cuffs work. They, they listen to your pulse, and then as it inflates, it listens for the point where your pulse stops, where it no longer can pick it up and then it reads the pressure there and that's your systolic and then it starts to let off and as it slowly deflates it's waiting until it can hear the pulse resume and that becomes your diastolic pressure in this situation the cuff cannot do that because a the blood vessels aren't big enough for this type of cuff to pick up it's not sensitive enough um, B, the cuff is way too big, and it's not going to form a tight enough seal around the leg to create that pressure difference. And I want to note, doing that briefly is not a problem. It, it's not going to hurt you. Um, I mean, other than it kind of does feel uncomfortable, which is, you know, but it is what it is. So uh, the joke here is th this is an error. This is an error message. That's literally all it says is error. You're too dumb to use this device. It's, it's so clownish. I mean, literally, it's <laughs> this clown's had some fun. Incidentally, we're going to we're going to talk about some stuff about drinking later um, for funsies. But stick around to the end for that stuff. So here is another one where they really went all out trying to set some things up. Um, but ultimately, it was absolutely just the biggest clown show ever, right? And one of the things about this one that really got me was this bag that this young lady is carrying. Because it kind of has an air of being official to it, right? Um, it, it looks like it's a nice leather bag. It's got that logo on it. And so I focused in on that logo because I was kind of curious about that. <laughs> right there, that one. Oh, we haven't even gotten to the alcohol conversation yet. 
So I, I finally tracked it back to a conference held by this particular university as an outreach. Excuse me. Um, and collaboration, I think it's, it's been a while since I actually read the page. But I was like, oh, well, okay. Because I wanted to try, when I was approaching this, one of the things I've tried to do to be different from the other channels that have you know, looked at or criticized the, the animal abusers that have these animals um, has been, they've been very, like, aggressive, and rightly so, but that also doesn't always work out really well, and I think it can be a turnoff, so I'm trying, with some success, um, to be kind of a more reasonable voice, to say, look, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, and every situation I looked at, it ended up being what you're going to see. These are representative of the vast spectrum of stuff that's going on. I have not seen a single person, I will give you the punchline now, not one of these abusers has ever taken that animal to an actual veterinarian. And I will guarantee that the overwhelming majority, if not all of them, are just using the clinics as a front and there might be one situation where I think that's not the case. Um, and even that, I don't think that it's a truly legitimate operation for reasons that we'll get into. But so anyways, this is the school that was associated with that. It is a medical school. It's local to the area. Um, it's quite well ranked. It's a good school. Excuse me. Discussing head noises. So I decided to look at their, their program offering, figuring maybe they would have a, a doctorate of veterinary medicine. No, they don't. Everything is human medicine. Everything. They have no veterinary in anything. So what happened is somebody probably like cast off that particular bag who actually went to a conference and this joker got a hold of it. Um, and as we watch, she has one primary skill set pretty much at all, and it's spraying a liquid on a Q-tip and then squidging out the animal's ears with the Q-tip. That's pretty much all she does, ever. Um, I'm pretty sure she shows up in a lot of these videos. Like, she's part of the group. And that's, I mean, that's literally all she does. So here she is again. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy, same abused animal, different setting. Like, they try and make these sets, but it's so obvious that they've got a sheet hanging in front of a wall and are at a card table with a Tupperware container full of fake medicine supplies. And all she's going to do, once again, is shove a Q-tip in its ear. That's all she does. And it's the same gal, and she just plays this game. She's a clown. Both of them. Clowns. Now, here's one that was a little bit different. This was a situation where there was a male that had gotten into a fight in the troop. And as we've established, it's very common for the VOs to aggravate constantly. These animals are constantly being pestered by the VOs. They're being followed. They're being teased and agitated. Um, they drug them. They kill them and steal their babies. I mean, these they screw around all day. And it causes redirection. And it causes fights amongst the animals. Um, and so inevitably, some of them get hurt. Uh, it's the reason that so many of the babies in the troops that they watch don't make it or get mangled it's because they are there. If they weren't there, the animals wouldn't be all clustered in one place and they wouldn't be right next to the road getting hit by cars all of the time. But they've got this source of food and so they all come and this is the result. So this one, they said they took this monkey to a vet. <laughs> and, and I'm with you, man. And one of the things I want you to, to look real close at right there is this animal's eyes. And you see how his pupils are a tiny pinprick? That's because he's drugged without, you know, within an inch of his life. They love to, they love to drug these animals with ketamine. So here it is, the rescue, right? 
got at least two people with cameras, probably more, to film this, picking this animal up and sticking it in a box. And you can tell he's not happy about it, but he's drugged enough that he's not hurting anybody. Um, and what they probably did is what they've done in the past, put it in a drink, the animal will drink it, they don't know. And then they're unconscious or dead in some cases. Uh, not uncommon, but so here we go. The obligatory moped ride. And now we're at the vet's. But the vet is just squatting on the concrete outside. And all they manage to do is, you know, wash him off and shave some hair. But again, look at those eyes. This animal is very drugged. And sitting in the yard. I mean, this is more clowns. And this one's lazy clowns. Like, they're not even trying to make a setting. Okay, so now... We're going to shift just a little bit and look at some of the clinics that I was talking about. Because these are pretty legit. Um, what's happening is not. So this chode has an abused animal that she's been torturing probably for a couple of years. And now she's taken him in to get some vaccinations or some shots. And we'll get to why that's absurd later. Shortly. So uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight with these pictures is... And again, not trying to impose my own bias, but it looks very much like the Space Next Door is literally a garbage pile. But, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. It does not look like a sterile or sanitary location at all on this bird pooped on table that's sitting outside. So, like, the facility is a legit facility and they are sitting out in front of it being clowns. I question whether or not the owner of the facility is even aware that they're there playing this stupid game. Now on the other end of the spectrum this is a veterinarian clinic that is clearly a veterinarian clinic. And you can tell right off the bat everything's sterile, we're wearing masks and gloves um, and everything is uniform. They have the steel tables, they have proper disposal for sharps over here. That's a big indicator, um, right? They have the appropriate tools over here. And, and what I like here is you can see it's a foot pedal to operate the sharps container, which is what you expect. Um, appropriate equipment, right? So watching this, I was torn as to whether or not they were actually vet technicians but then I realized what they were doing. Um, and they brought this baby in to remove her umbilical stump. And anybody who has had a baby or been around a baby knows that you don't remove the umbilical stump. You let it fall off on its own. That and the fact that he's not wearing any kind of uniform tells me that this guy is a clown, but it's a clown that has probably, you know, paid a small bribe to use this facility to film this video of them torturing an animal. So, the whole thing is totally uncalled for, making this a clown show. Here is another one where we're outside of a legit clinic, where they probably do actually do vaccinations for animals that are legal, right? But this is not taking place within the clinic at all. They do it outside on a table, again, that's probably had birds poop on it. So nothing about this is sanitary. Um, and the person who is the, the vet, I make the finger quotes when I say that, is not wearing any kind of uniform. I don't think that this person is at all trained to do anything like this. Um, and this is an animal that, that regularly gets injured because these people are bad. And clowns. Some other ways you can identify a complete clown. Um, in a medical setting, these fingernails don't fly. Um, they're a sterile hazard. And even, you know, in places where it's a big deal to have longer fingernails, you have to keep them clipped if you are working in medicine. 
it's vital. Another hint is, see how this, this bottle should be up at eye line. Anybody who's ever actually done this kind of thing, they know that they need to be looking for a meniscus and they need to be looking directly on or they're going to get a thing called parallax error that happens when you look from an angle. The final indication that this young lady is a complete moron, I mean, showed, is she's bending the syringe. It's almost as bad as watching Sigourney Weaver in the first Avatar movie with an automatic pipetter in her hand turn the thing upside down. Don't do that. We'll destroy it. So, there's one example. Here's another example of obvious clowning in a clinic that is a legit clinic. You can see that she's not wearing any kind of uniform and she's still got her purse on. As we, oops, wrong way, as we look at more professional, you know, at the professional facilities, it was pretty obvious nobody's wearing a purse. They have lockers. And if you look at these rusty scissors that are being used to trim the fur on the back of this poor baby, um, obviously these people do not know what they're doing and are in fact clowns. But that's not to say that these are not real legitimate animal clinics. And that's kind of what I want to stress is I feel like most of these clinics are being taken advantage of by unscrupulous employees um, that are making a couple of bucks for themselves by letting these clown shows go on. Um, this is another example where it, it was just, there's a lot of weird going on in this one. And I kind of want to highlight this channel because they are really, really sick. I'll show you what I mean. Um, you know, and I was like, liar. But then I came back to the maybe not because, again, I'm trying to give everybody a fair shake. So I started digging through this and I kept going back and forth and back and forth. But here's where I landed. They claim that the gap in his teeth is, is natural. They just don't grow there. But then you look a little further and you find an episode where they're literally ripping one of his teeth out. And I'm not sure there was ever a reason given for why this tooth was damaged like that. But this animal gets injured regularly and like it's there's some really weird stuff. So I went and looked for and you cannot imagine how hard it is to find a picture of a juvenile stump-tailed macaque with its mouth open, um, showing its teeth. They, they all come back to the same stuff. Or they're animals belonging to these chodes who have ripped their teeth out. And, you know, how can you tell? So, you know, I start looking and here's an adult... Um, another adult, it was really hard to find the juveniles, but I kept looking. Some more adults. Here's a juvenile. Doesn't necessarily have big things yet, but also no gaps. And this one has, over the years, consistently had those gaps there. And this is, you know, more than two or three years old. And they get those adult teeth fairly early. It's not like they have baby teeth for five or six years like we do. So this animal should have canines and he does not because they ripped them out. This creepy chode monster ripped this animal's teeth out when it was little. Probably didn't even anesthetize them. Or if they did, it was just some ketamine, right? And, and this animal is not afraid of the rain does not love you. This animal is terrified, terrified, constant fear of the abuse. Again, very clearly missing teeth. They don't not grow there. You ripped them out. Disgusting ghoul. What he wants to say when dad is working is, please never come back, you monster. But that's not true because he has basically Stockholm Syndrome and would be devastated, is devastated every time you leave. 
which is also abuse, incidentally. Monkeys are not supposed to be alone. But here we have them pulling out one of his incisors. For no discernible reason. I never could figure out why this was happening, but it, like uh, what I assume is somebody smacked him in the face and it knocked the tooth loose because that's and again, this is the kind of content that they give us. And these are all, again, keeping in mind, fair use. These are not my monkeys. Um, these are their thumbnails that have had, in this case, almost half a million views. And has been up for three years. And the thumbnail alone is so sick, right? And more where the animal is getting injured. And then this absolute stupidity. Doesn't love taking a bath, you're delusional. And why shave the hair? So like, nothing this channel does has any merit at all. And the fact that they took this poor animal to this particular clinic, which we see fairly regularly tells me that the people involved with this clinic are just complete trash as far as I'm concerned because they're willing to do this stuff in spite of what we're going to get to as the sort of the coup de gras or the, the end of this um, so here's that clinic actually um, again and this is another indication that we're looking at clowns is you have four people working with this one animal and mostly they're just screwing around. They have four staff members just playing around with the monkey. They're not doing anything. And I think what's going on here is maybe one or two of them actually work there, but the rest of them are part of the chode crew and are just throwing on uh, the costume. Um, I, I mean, it definitely looks like a legitimate clinic. They have all of the legitimate like stuff I guess the equipment microscopes the they have the scales they have the light board for x-rays although not so much anymore IV stands um, an ultrasound but here's the thing about the ultrasound and looking at this young lady note that she has another shirt on underneath and later we're gonna see her with her bag still on over her while she's doing that. One of the reasons that you would never, ever, ever, ever see a legitimate medical personnel working with a bag on them like that is that is a germ magnet and a germ source. Not going to be something that you're going to see in a medical setting because it will cause infection. It's not good. And it can knock stuff down. The animals are going to mess with it. I mean, it shows you they're not professional. Um, but what really shows you that this one has no idea what she's doing is right there on the monitor. So the way ultrasound works is by passing sound waves through the body. There are multiple types of wave involved in sound. Two of them are called P waves and S waves. And a P wave, P wave is sort of a push pull motion in terms of molecularly. The S wave is sometimes called the shear wave because it is the ziggy zaggy motion. Now, P waves travel through everything equally. They can go through liquids, solids, gases, doesn't matter. They're going to travel. They're going to go at different speeds through different materials, but they will travel through everything. S waves will only travel through solids. So if they hit a liquid, they dissipate and they don't go through it. And that's how we, that's how we image the inside of the earth um, and how we image down hole when we're working in um, boreholes. I've done some work in this whole thing called carbon sequestration. Um, the punchline is I've done a lot of work with the geologic equivalent of ultrasound. And what I can tell you is this screen shows absolutely nothing. Nothing. And I tried to give her the, again, benefit of the doubt. So I went looking. Was there ever a time where she managed to find something of value? 
Let me get that out of the way. Go on, you. Thank you. Here you can almost maybe make something out, but the contrast is not there. She can't figure out how to work this thing, which makes it pretty obvious. And there she is um, on a different occasion wearing a different shirt under a bad shirt. Um, that one's got buttons and it rolls down. It's very not okay for veterinary work either um, with her bag on. So pretty obviously has no idea what she's doing both from the work that we see and from the way that she dresses and behaves herself. Now, this is an occasion where I think we have clinic staff that may actually be clinic staff that have been bribed to play these games. Um, because I guarantee not one of them has ever had training on monkeys. And we'll get to why if you haven't figured it out yet. So... <laughs> They take a blood sample and they stick it in this machine and then they run it and say, oh, it tells us this about this animal. Well, okay, and maybe they even know, and it's not just the monkeys that they harass, apparently, this one. And this is actually what made me think these are actual clinic employees because they're also harassing the cat um, and letting the child, you know, abuse the cat, which is kind of messed up. Um, but then they have something like this behind the counter on the other side. <laughs> it, it, they have syringes that they've left stuck into the lids of various bottles. And I just do not get it. Very weird. So I actually want to come back to the... Oh, no, I'm going to come back. I have another slide about that. I almost forgot. Um... So here at that location, there's the needle weirdness. Um, and she's sterilizing a, a tool to use to get a fecal sample, as far as I could tell. Their nose sticking out. Um, two different visits, again, because look, two different outfits. So we're looking at two different occasions where this young person has used these forceps to get a fecal sample. And I want to point out, these are monkeys. Wait five minutes, he'll poo. You don't need to do this. But she's going to get in there anyways with those forceps. And really get that, you know, turd or whatever out of his butt. And you can tell that's not comfortable for him. And I want to remind or maybe point out what she's using. This is what she is shoving up his butt. And, stop that. More egregiously, she has them open. See how that's a part like that? Which means she's shoving that up his butt for literally no reason. There is no valid reason to do that. The baby will poop. Give him a minute. Now, there's this concept of calibration, and I'll use an example that's familiar to me. So, when I work with what's called a secondary ion mass spectrometer, what it does is we have a sample here, right? And the beam hits the sample and knocks stuff out. It's basically a sledgehammer on a micrometer scale. We can get down to about three microns. Um, with this if we use the right filters and there's apparently uh, micro sims that can actually go further but so what we do is and then we we can collect just one element as it's being kicked off and what we have to do though is we have to calibrate for that so we put in a sample that has none of that element and we take a reading and then we put it on the chart this is where it lands on the chart and then we take an element, you know, a sample that has another known reading, and we take at least three and create a line. And that line then, as we remember from probably high school, um, Y equals MX plus B, right? That's our slope. And so we have a rise over run, and there's our M. 
And so we can use this equation, however it comes out in terms of the numbers there, um, to set the machine so that it gives us correct output. If you try to calibrate for carbon dioxide and then measure for water, you're going to get gibberish. You have to calibrate for water to get water. That's how it works. These machines are calibrated for other animals. They're not meant for monkeys. <laughs> and on varying visits, they inevitably come up with totally different diagnoses um, for the same animals in the same condition. It, it's obvious clownery. Just happens to be in what I think is a legit clinic. Um, and maybe a couple of the employees that they're interacting with are clinicians here, but they're still clowns. Um, and so here's, here is the more recent trend that I had noticed is they've started really making a show out of getting the monkeys their vaccines and about the cards for these monkeys vaccinations and how, look, we have a register book, we have a log book and an official stamp. Ooh. It's illegal to have pet monkeys in either country. And while, like in the U.S., the law says that if somebody has an illegal pet and they bring it in for care, the vet doesn't have to confiscate it necessarily. Um, they can treat the animal and let it go home. They may have to report it. I think it varies by state, but I, I don't know for sure on that count. But the goal is that they don't want them to not seek care for the animal. They'd rather have them seek care, you know, even though it's illegal. But an illegal animal is not going to have vaccine cards and it's not going to have a registry book. And, more importantly, the vaccines are for dogs and cats. They're not meant for primates. They're not going to work on primates. Primates have wildly different antibodies than dogs and cats. There's a reason that we can't test our own vaccines on mice or dogs or cats because they don't have the same antibodies that we do. And these monkeys would possibly get the antibodies from taking the human vaccine as human birth control works just fine on them. Um... That's how they do it in Monkey World in Dorset. They give all the chimpanzees a birth control pill every day. It's quite clever. Right? Um, these vaccines do literally nothing. Cannot possibly be of any use. So all these jokers running around with these fake ID cards and vaccine cards. Like, why? Why? It's so dumb. All right, so clowns all around. Now, what's next? Lots of stuff. Put the pen away. Stop. Thank you. All right, so my first book came out. Actually, I had a novel. Um, it's a science fiction novel. I actually need the pen back now. Um, the title is... Golden, I cannot write. Ratio is the series name, colon, lost. Um, and the author, my pen name is Katie, C-O-L-S, Katie Nichols. Um, so that came out this last September. Um, the ebook is only four fifty, so that's awesome if you're interested in science fiction. Um, this is a story that is autism forwards because I'm autistic um, and I really wanted that voice. It has a really diverse cast and there's one not safe for work joke about the male genitalia. Very clever. And I won't spoil it more than that. Um, I finally hit a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you, everybody. That was really like kind of made my week when I saw that. Um, which means I can actually start looking at membership things. 
um, to weed out the trolls and be able to have the conversations that we can't have right now um, because, you know, they get reported. Even though it's their own videos and their own pictures, they still, you know, it is what it is. Um, which would, you know, allow us to expand the tops, topics. But that's, I, I think, still a ways down the road. Um, I have a bunch of other videos that I'm going to make on this subject. Um, some of the possible topics, and I'll eventually set out a um, survey on this. Um, zoonosis, which is the transmission of diseases from animals to humans. There's a couple of pathogens that are pretty easily transmissible between the two. Um, and it's a pretty big problem. Uh, if, again, Monkey World Dorset, they're really fun, definitely worth following. Um, when coronavirus came around, there was a big problem of it passing back and forth between the people and the chimpanzees and the other great apes because they're so closely related to us. And that's why the vaccine would work for them. But, um, so that's one possible topic is to just talk about, um, the possible diseases being transferred by the macaques specifically, since that's what we're focused on right now is macaques. Um, if anybody wanted to focus on another species at some point, we definitely could. Um, I love the woolly monkeys. They're adorable. Um, and orangutans are just fantastic. Like, won't even go there. I love animals in general. And so... Um, we can also look at some questionable parenting choices and why we have concerns. Um, and then I also have a series that I was thinking of calling Trouble at the Temples, um, where we look at the eventual fate of most of these animals. Um, because there's really only two possibilities. They are going to be killed by their tormentors, or they're going to get dumped at the temple. Nobody or they're going to get confiscated. I should say there is a third option. They can get taken away from them, thankfully. Um, but most of them end up at the temple, and most of them are just involved in non-stop wholesale death, drama, and psychosis. And I would love to look at some of that, too. Um, the other videos I really want to start making, um, I'm calling... Because I'd been wanting to do the geology 101 stuff, but found that, A, nobody's really interested, um, because it's a bit dry. It is intended mostly for people who are, like, enrolled in an introductory geology class and struggling, but I think I'm going to change the format a little bit, and we're going to call it Science with Shots. Um, because the other night, being a gigantic nerd, I did the math to find out exactly how much ethanol it takes to get me wasted and um, I have a tumbler that's just the right size with some ice to fill it with my choice of whiskey and then drink that while giving a geology lecture and see where the night takes us so let me know if you think that sounds like fun I'm probably gonna do it anyways uh, I am really happy when I drink and I love everybody except for the chodes. Take care.